to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, September 16th, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, was today's Navy Yard shooting rampage a massive drill designed to divert attention from Obama's executive mess and to present a show of force? Alex Jones joins David Knight to decipher the evidence. Plus, Obamacare wants Australian-style prison data collection right down to your sex life. Then, the typhoon over Fukushima upsets an already volatile situation. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, of course, our top story is the shooting today in the Navy Yard outside Washington, D.C., now, details are constantly changing, and they're sketchy at this point, but as we go to air, we are told that there are 13 people who have died, including the suspect. He has been identified as Aaron Alexis, 34, a military contractor from Texas, and police say that one other gunman may be on the loose. The other possible suspect, as described by police, would be a black male between 40 and 50, wearing an olive, drab-colored, military-style uniform. Well, as we mentioned, the details are constantly changing. We were told earlier in the day by Kathy Lanier, the D.C. police chief, you recall, she's the one who, in defiance of the Second Amendment and the Supreme Court, has disarmed people throughout D.C. We were told by the D.C. police chief that there were two other shooters. Now they're saying that it is possibly just one other shooter. So these details are changing. But what we can look at that's very interesting is how the initial reaction took place and the, the way the president and the media reacted to this. Of course, the president never lets a crisis go unused, as Rahm Emanuel warned him and uh, advised him. In this story from the Weekly Standard, the president issued a brief telling people what was going to be happening. And this is coming from, notice the different federal authorities he's got here. This is coming from the assistant to the president for Homeland Security and Terrorism, counterterrorism, I should say, deputy chief of staff. And also, they refer to their federal partners the Navy, the FBI, and finally they mention local officials. Now, of course, this is D.C., but notice the emphasis on the feds. Notice the federalization. Notice how they are in charge. And then he goes on in a story reported on InfoWars to say that basically just obey your president. First he says, I'm in charge. I'm here to protect you. Then he says, obey me. And the story from Adon Salazar says, cryptic White House message, respect authority. The White House attempted to take control of the situation by issuing an anonymous statement telling citizens to unquestionably obey orders from so-called authorities. We urge citizens to listen to the authorities, follow directions from the first responders, the anonymous source said. The timing of the White House request to trust it is interesting due to the fact that just last Friday, a Gallup poll indicated that Americans' trust in the government to handle problems is at an all-time low. Yes, Obama has kind of become the Rodney Dangerfield of world leaders. So this is something that is serendipitous at best, if not uh, something that they're, they're using it. If they didn't create it, we'll have to see. You know, whenever you have a situation where you've got a rapist that is in a particular neighborhood and someone is raped and there's an MO that looks exactly like what this rapist has done before, the first thing you want to do is investigate that rapist. So we're going to be looking very carefully to see if there's signs of a false flag. And we're going to have Alex Jones joining us this half-hour broadcast. And he's going to talk about what he sees with the latest developments. But what are they telling people to do? They're telling us to obey them. But what do they want us to do to obey them? Well, they're telling us to shelter in place, you know, kind of like duck and cover from the Cold War. And as Julie Wilson points out in InfoWars story, the shelter-in-place order leaves victims as sitting ducks. The Navy's issued a shelter-in-place order for personnel, which seems to fall right in line with the notion that you're not supposed to adequately defend yourself in the event of a mass shooting, but instead put your life and your safety completely in the hands of the police and other local authorities, or I should say federal authorities, certainly in this case. Sheltering in place is just as ridiculous as the DHS advising victims to use scissors to defend themselves. And of course, nowhere in the video that the DHS put out that they tell you that you should use a firearm or even own one because then that would put you somewhat in charge of your own security. The difference with this and the difference with the, besides the ridiculous advice that they used to give people during the Cold War, especially children, duck and cover, put your head in the metal desk so we can identify the dental records, I guess. 
The problem is, is that was just giving somebody something to do in what would be a hopeless situation. You're, you're in a city and there's an incoming nuclear weapon. When there's a shooter going on, you can do things that would really help to alleviate your risk of being killed. Staying in place, ducking in cover, rolling up in a ball, that just makes you more of a potential victim. You need to get out of there, get out of the area, and a lot of people did do that. Now, even though the Fed was taking credit for making us safe, this all happened in a disarmament zone. And remember that this is something where they not only disarm the citizens in D.C., but as we learned today, they have a history of even disarming the security guards, the personnel who are responsible for security, as well as soldiers on military bases. In a story by Kit Daniels on InfoWars, he said, the military brass says, we prefer our active duty as disarmed slaves. Since at least the 1950s, political motivations, quote unquote, have left American service members systematically disarmed during various military duties, which has led to mass casualties and gun-free zones, as we just saw in Fort Hood. Now, on this website today, there was a lot of posting back and forth with people who were talking about how this had been accomplished, what they had seen as military personnel on base. One of the posters on this back and forth wrote that while abroad a, uh, and on a Navy ship, he was issued a 1911 pistol with no ammunition. And as I point out, this is even worse than Barney Fife. At least Barney Fife had a bullet to put in his uh, gun. He had one bullet that he kept in his shirt. It's really more like uh, Sheriff Woody from Toy Story. You know, he's got the star, he's got the holster, but no gun. And we had several callers call in and give us some more insights about that and other things today on Alex Jones's radio show. I was stationed at the Naval Yards for two years. Uh, my girl's in the service industry. She knows a lot of troops down there. And uh, so we're looking through her Facebook, and um, multiple people work there. They have family members there. And uh, what's crazy is it seems to be trending that a lot of people weren't at work today. Um, one in particular says, uh, thankful my wife, mother-in-law, and brother-in-law did not go to work today. And then they say they're on safe. Um, but like I said, a lot of people have multiple family members who work in the building, and uh, a lot of people weren't at work today. Do me a favor. Well, well, we know on 9-11 the media called it a rumor, but it turns out and then spun it into Israelis not being in the towers. What was really said was Arab kids in, in New York Daily News, you name it, said those towers won't be there next week to their classes. And there was even a police investigation. So the media, rather than focus on that, spun it and said people say no Jews died when it was the media saying that themselves to change the subject. And uh, it turned out that the buildings were about half empty from what they would normally be at that building's occupancy. The buildings were already about a third empty because of problems and asbestos. But for the tenants that were there, about half the people that day didn't go to work. And it turned out people did get warnings not to go across the board. You're telling me military police are patrolling in some cases with their firearms unloaded and stowed? Absolutely. And, and, you know, we had one extreme case where the provost marshal was requiring his folks to, to get his, their magazines with ammunition. He sealed in a bag, and they had to check it out of the arms room and check it back in, um, in inside of this heat sealed bag. And if it was open, they did a, what's called a 15-6 investigation, uh, commander's inquiry, as to why that uh, police officer, that military policeman, uh, open their heat shield bag. Man, talk but about control it, it, freaks. It, 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 I mean, that's like where the Secretary of Defense, Panetta, member wouldn't be around armed troops. So as Obama takes credit for protecting us, even as they disarm us, the question is, who is he going to blame for this? Well, right away, they start blaming gun owners and the AR-15. Obama says uh, yesterday, just yesterday, which is an inter interesting coincidence that he would go on ABC News with George Stephanopoulos and say that we had 80 to 90 percent of the country that agreed with us on gun control. Really? I think he got those numbers confused. I think it was uh, 80 to 90 percent of the people who opposed him on his war with Syria. Maybe he didn't notice that last week a couple of Colorado Colorado state legislators were recalled. Now, this is historic. This is the first time in 100 years that they've had anybody recalled since they've had the law on the books. Basically, the voters there put these 
anti-gun legislators in front of a firing squad, essentially. They fired them in a, in a recall. But what Obama did yesterday, just before this happened, interesting timing, is he was deliberately telling a lie about the popularity of gun control. Although we know that there are still going to be people who are pushing for it, and it's still going to be a fight, and they're reviving this fight, obviously. We got the first salvo yesterday on the uh, Stephanopoulos show, and now we're getting more of it today. On CNN, Anthony Gucciardi noted that the top voted comment on CNN's uh, news site calls for a total gun ban. This is from somebody who identified themselves as Hillary 2016. It was one of the top three of the 11,000 strong comment sections. The commenter said, this is exactly why we need to stop hedging our bets and just start our campaign to outlaw all guns. Yes, they're going to come after all guns, but they're going to specifically come after rifles, after the AR-15. That seems to be the one that they've been after all year. Now, Kit Daniels had an interesting article talking about statistics, just how frequently, how likely are you to be shot by a rifle? Is that something that really is the weapon of choice in mass crimes? Is it the weapon of choice in burglaries, and other shootings? No, actually, according to the FBI's crime statistics in the U.S., their 2012 statistics, all rifles, all rifles only account for two and a half percent. That would be 322 deaths out of 12,765. Now, that rifles category is not broken down specifically, so we can assume that AR-15s are just a small portion of the overall rifles, so it's not even 2.5%, but that's what they're going to focus on. That's what they focused on in Sandy Hook, and they're going to focus on that again. And, of course, the uh, mainstream media is already starting to talk about AR-15s and blaming them. The question is, are you more likely to be shot by somebody in a mass shooting event or by a terrorist, or are you more likely to be shot by cops? Now, there's a lot of things, statistically, that are more risky than someone being shot. Certainly more risky than being shot in a terrorist event or in a mass shooter event. Well, as we warned you nine months ago, as Sandy Hook was unfolding, they're not going to be content with just taking the Second Amendment. They're going to come after the First Amendment as well. We were telling all the people on the left who were so eager to grab guns, we said, well, just watch out. They're going to come for the First Amendment as well. And we saw that just this last week. We saw two of the biggest gun grabbers, Dianne Feinstein and Chuck Schumer, start to come after the First Amendment, turning a fundamental right into a government-granted privilege, which is what they're trying to do with guns. They want to take away our free speech as well as our ability to protect ourselves and to constrain the government. So just be aware of this. This is all connected. It's not a Republican, Democrat. It's not left versus right. This is the authoritarians who want to take all of your liberties versus a libertarian approach where we keep our liberties, where we recognize fundamental God-given rights, and we don't turn them into government-granted privileges because we're worried about being safe. Now, right after the break, we're going to be back with some information that's going to affect your health as well as your privacy. So stay tuned. And after that, we're going to have Alex Jones coming in here, giving us the latest on this shooting in New York. InfoWarsStore.com, a conscious and involved distributor of independently made products that support a healthy and aware community. Dive into cleaner waters with your own ProPure system and Pro1B filter. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. We've handpicked a veritable treasure trove of the best non-GMO seed banks on the market. And our selection of films showcases a wealth of knowledge outdone only by our books. Check for combo packs to multiply your savings. Wear your colors proudly with one of these conversation starters. Now available in pink. Get prepared and fund the revolution at InfoWarsStore.com. <laughs> 